In studying genetics, there's a few things that we have to kind of think about how we can apply our knowledge. So you should know what chromosomes are, you should know what the genome is, you should know what genes are, what genes do. Uh, if you're covering the genetics unit, then you should have learned about transcription and translation as the central dogma of biology, the idea that genes code for proteins and these proteins do things. So one question we can ask is, out of all the living things that are out there, how does the complexity of living organisms affect the number of genes? Or is there any type of relationship? So we can try to figure out. Uh, you could take a look at this simple diagram here. It's showing you that humans have around 22,000 genes, chicken 16,000, fruit flies 14,000, E. coli 4,000, influenza virus has 11 different genes, a grape 30,000 genes. Now, depending on the sources that you look at here, like I got this diagram from one particular source, there's a bunch of other sources. These numbers are going to vary and uh, change depending on the source that you're looking at, but most of the time they're relatively similar. You might see a few discrepancies here. So E. coli, you should know, is a type of bacteria that's found in our gut uh, out of in their entire genome, um, 3,200 genes. These are the specific organisms that the biology syllabus, the 2014 IB biology syllabus, is saying you should be able to apply and discuss when presented with the data, I think it's highly unlikely that you'll be expected to name all these full organisms and their actual genus species names and also be able to give their actual numbers. The reason I suspect this is one of the things that I just said before, which is that depending on the source that you look at, um, these published numbers are going to vary a little bit. But it's more to think big picture. So I'll remind you about what the big picture is here at the end. So rice, 41,000 genes. This fruit fly, yes, this is pretty accurate, 14,000 genes, 14,000 genes. A water flea, this is a great little organism if it's designed with a lot of ethical considerations taken care of, a great little organism to use for studying heart rate. I did this in college. A lot of fun. 31,000 genes. And here we are. Homo sapiens, humans, 23,000 genes. So you can see, I would say that me, as a human, I would feel like I'm more complex than, you know, rice as a rice plant, but there are 41,000 genes. So you can see, uh, in terms of complexity, there's not a clear relationship between complexity and the number of genes, but we're going to see a little graph here that shows the genome size. Now, I want to remind you right here that the genome size does not equal to the number of genes. So when I say Mr. Lee's genome size, I'm talking about all of my DNA, and a lot of that DNA doesn't actually code for specific proteins. The ones that do, I call genes, and they're called coding DNA, and the ones that don't are called non-coding DNA, and we have a lot of that. So the genome size is all of our DNA, so you actually have to be able to compare genome size as well too. So I just wanna emphasize in this short video that genome size is not the same thing as the number of genes. So I'm gonna zoom into this graph a little bit here. Um, also, the precise number of genes is not known. I already mentioned that, which is why the syllabus in any exam will not be asking you to recall specific numbers. Rather, you might see this in kind of data form or data table form and be able to draw some conclusions and talk big picture about what's going on. So I'll leave you with one more graph to kind of look at here. This is genome size, all of the DNA, and this is the number of protein coding genes. And you can see in general, there's a relatively positive correlation as the amount of DNA for a particular organism increases, the number of genes increases as well too. But you can see for eukaryotes, that's what these little uh, green triangles are showing. For eukaryotes, there are some exceptions where we have a very large genome size, tons and tons of DNA, but fewer genes that are actually in there. And if you want a little bit of higher level uh, information here, one thing that's kind of cool about genes, which is discussed in, I forget which actual topic is, I just recorded a video about it, is the idea that a single gene could actually code for more than one protein depending on how you cut it up, depending on how you cut out the introns and stick the exons back together. So you can actually get a lot of proteins out of a single gene. And we've already figured out a few different examples uh, 
of how this actually works. I think tropomyosin is one such protein that's made in this way as a result of uh, chopping up one particular gene into several different forms. So there you go, a little bit about comparing the number of genes between different organisms and big picture, the number of genes is not equal to the genome size.